Welcome to the Baltimore Art Scene, where you'll get a sneak peek at all kinds of art growing in Baltimore's creative communities. From the new in town to the underground, there's everything from dance, music, theater, fashion, galleries, and more. And we're here to let you know so you can get out and go be a part of the Baltimore Art Scene. On today's episode of TBAS, we'll sit down with director Troy Burton to discuss the 10th anniversary of a thought-provoking theater piece with five local artists. Now tell us a little bit about the piece, starting with the title and how you came about it. So I, uh, I hear these black guys from Baltimore are doing a show, and it's called a... Uh, it's, it's called a, uh, a, a raw nigger show. A real nigger show. Uh, that is what I said, a real N-I-G-G-E-R show. No, it's not N-I-G-G-E-R. It's an N-I-G-G-A, nigga. <laughs> Well, the title is called A Real Nigger Show, and it's a piece that I um, work with, uh, with former students of mine who said we would like to produce a piece, write a piece, and so we just got together and created this idea, but they wanted to talk about this one word and how it has so many different meanings in, in the hip-hop culture, as well as how people speak in the street and the history of the word. How many actors are actually in the production? Um, in the current production, there are five actors. In the original production, there were six actors. Uh, we lost one of our cast members, Robert Chu, who was known for playing Prop Joe on The Wire. Um, he originally worked with us, but he passed this past January. Why bring the piece back again at this time? Well, there are a lot of things happening in the world. Because of conversations that we're having in this country, when we saw the climbing of the world, we said now is the time. If you feel threatened by me, that means that you fear me. And if you fear me, then you won't hear me. And if you don't hear me, then you won't know what it is that I'm trying to communicate to you. And if I can't communicate my wants, my dreams, and my needs to you, then you won't understand me. And if you don't understand me, then you will distance yourself from me. And if you distance yourself from me, there will always be a big gap between us. And if we have a big gap between us, every time you see me, you won't see the real me. You will only see the big gap that we have between us. The men that I work with, they actually bring their own experiences, having um, gone to college and, and they earning their degrees in various areas. Some of them in actually theater, Robert Lee Hardy, for one, who graduated from SUNY. He's teaching, he's a teaching artist now here in Baltimore. Wow, um, 10 years ago, I was a baby. Um, back then it was more about just performing, and now it's more about getting out there and really living in the characters. And, really trying to heal people and things just seem a lot more um, seasoned and polished now and um, from the early 20s to early 30s it's just a little more comfortable with yourself and who you are and um, yeah it's, um, it was an amazing experience then but now it's like you know, I really feel like my soul is in work. I speak in my own voice perhaps not in the tongues of angels but rather in the ancestors codex of broken sentences, split verbs, and participles that dangle endlessly on. Still uh, very much high energy, still very physical. Acting, there's movement, there's poetry, great storytelling. They bring their own experiences of what they have learned outside of working with me, and it really helps with working with this script and, and actually presenting this piece with this word in a very careful but thoughtful and, and, and a well-balanced manner. What's happening, brother? Is a brother just another man with whom you share the same mother? Now that I'm growing on what I know, I feel I should enlighten it. So what am I here talking about? By the poison that you can't see, smell, taste, or touch. Look, I don't need to be on no medication, nigga. And if God is our father, nigga, that's devils becoming a more evil time. I face my fears and wipe away my tears. Y'all walk around looking for the angry Christ. Nigga! A mind once stretched by new ideas never returns to its original dimension. We niggas for life! Still tripping, life still knocks you down. Oh. 
And when someone leaves the theater after seeing the piece, what do you want them to be talking about? I want them to think about the world we live in. Your role that you play in society, um, no matter what uh, color you are, that the fact that there are things that are happening in our world and we all have to do our individual part to make this place a better place. We are the historical niggas. And thank you for joining us. Nigga history. <laughs> we've, we've, we've traveled to like Wil Wilberforce University to actually present the piece and there were discussions and the psychology and history classes so it, it's a piece that takes a look at history but it also take, is looking at urban culture something that really can be discussed in you know an educational environment <laughs> was once known as a physical condition. It has been applied to an entire race of people. When the word nigger derives, the meaning implied was of a debased, ignorant, or very low person. Then, African Americans dropped the ER and added an A. <laughs> Thus forming a new word, nigger. <laughs> Despite the controversial and often negative opinions about the N-word, the creators of this show hope to communicate a message of healing through the piece. And with a packed house at every performance, it would seem there's an audience eager to hear that message. That's all for today's edition. So until next time, go on out and explore because there is so much more to the Baltimore art scene.